through that ravine. Well, let's call it off. What do you mean, call it off? Now we got a chance to get him? He's in the next county by now. Let's get on home. Come on, how many more calves you want to lose to that wolf? You sure don't give up easy, do you? Come on, let's go. here for a while we'll head back whether you like it or not we're not going to get home till tomorrow morning as it is i sure wish i could have got him in my sights just once you know he doesn't sound too far off well where are you going just gonna have a look see you take it easy
yesterday. Saw that wolf and just let go. Never stopped to think if you were around anywhere. Now we're gonna get you to Doc Hickman. City Road, Joe. And there's a rig coming. Whoa, boy! Whoa! Oh, take a look over there. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Yes. The mountains of Wicklow on a morning in May. Oh, you and your island. Don't you ever think about anything else? <laughs> Look. He looks like he's carrying someone. Must be hurt. Come on, boy. Good afternoon. I need help. My brother's been hurt. Certainly, certainly. Help me with Kim it. Kim down here to Watch me. Watch that left shoulder. Easy now. Easy. That's it. I'm Tie my horse in the back, will you? Uh, Put him in the back. I wonder if he could get us to the Ponderosa. By all means. What happened? We had an accident. What, what kind of an accident? Got a bullet in it. He looks like he's been in a terrible fight. Yeah. Wolf. A wolf? <coughs> yeah, we're strangers here. This is Ponderosa. Could you tell me how well, to get it? Just start driving, will you? I'll give you directions as we go. Quiet. Where you been? What, what happened to him? He's hurt. What happened? Well, I shot him. I'll explain it to you later. Mr. Reardon and his daughter helped us along the road. Let's get him in the house. He shot him. Oh, my. Yeah. Where's Bob? Don't be He's in Placerville. He left this morning. Should we help them, Daddy? We can ask. under the bone. When this happened, madam? Late yesterday afternoon at Montpelier Gorge. You brought him all the way in from Montpelier like this? Yeah. Mr. Cartwright, we were wondering if we could be of any help? Yes, perhaps you can. We've got to get this bullet out, so Miss Reardon, you might boil some water, please. Well, let's go into town and get Doc Hickman. Tell him that apart from being clawed by that wolf, that bullet's in deep. Way down deep. Get him here fast. I sure will, Adam. Gonna have to get that bullet out with something. Uh, so watch him. I put the water on to boil. I collected these. I don't know which one would be best for you. Put them down.
go ahead. Taste it. It might be too weak. It's very good. Hop Singh couldn't have done better. Who's Hop Singh? He's our cook. He's been out on the range with the hands for the last three days. Now go ahead and drink it. It'll make you feel a lot better. And uh, I made some sandwiches. I'll go get them. Where's Hoss with that doctor? They'll get here. I hope so. Why didn't I stop Joe? I should have laid down the law. Sometimes that's pretty hard to do. The truth is I wanted that wolf killed just as much as he did, and I used just about as much common sense as he did. I should have known he'd have been around somewhere. A man can only do what he thinks is right at the time. Yeah. Sure. Excuse me. Aren't you going to have one of these sandwiches? Oh, no, thanks. I better go up and stay with Joe. I'm sorry I haven't even thanked you for what you did for us today. Oh, we didn't go out of our way at all, Mr. Cartwright. Sheila and I are out here on a holiday. We rented that rig. We were on our way to Virginia City when we met you. And we'd better get going. It's late. Oh, yes, my dear, you're right. Well, no, please stay here. It's dark. It's a very long ride. We have plenty of room. Please stay. Maybe we should. It is late. But very well, Mr. Cartwright. We accept. With thanks. Good. He's taking it hard, isn't he? Ah, the way he's blaming himself. I shudder to think what'll happen if his brother should die. Mr. Cartwright? I, uh, brought you some coffee. I thought you might like some. Thanks. Sit down. Why don't you tell me about yourself? All I know is that you're out here on a holiday and that your father is very obviously Irish. That would be hard to cover up, wouldn't it? He came over here steerage from Ireland when he was very young. Reminds me of a professor I had back in college. Very wonderful man. Well, Daddy's hardly the professor type. He worked 20 years digging coal in the Pennsylvania mines. When he retired four years ago, he was president of the company. Where did you go to college? Back east? Mm-hmm. What'd you study? Architecture. Architecture? And you came here to live on a ranch? Yeah. Sometimes I wonder why. What brings you out here? Oh, I read a lot about it. Heard a lot. The periodicals are very enthusiastic about the West. Oh, yes, the uh, giant mountains, vast deserts, dazzling sunsets, a matchless paradise under the canopy of stars. I believe that's the way the phrases go, isn't it? Doctor. The doctor didn't come? No, but he'll be here. Where's the doctor? Adam, he hadn't been in his office since early this morning. Well, where is he? Did you see him? No, but I left a message for him at the Fleming Ranch. Miss Fleming's gonna have a baby. He'll get the message, Adam, and he'll be here. Don't worry. I telegraphed Paul what happened to little Joe. Maybe you should send for another doctor. There isn't another doctor. There's all the mountains, deserts, sunsets any visitor could possibly want, but there's only one doctor in a hundred miles. The periodicals didn't write that for the gullible traveler to read, did they? How's little Joe? He'll be all right. You'd better eat something. I'll fix you some coffee. Thank you, ma'am. Let me go up and see about little Joe first.
I wish I could do something to bring you comfort. All that keeps coming to my mind is that phrase by Thoreau. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Think about that, Adam. You'll find you're not alone. Try to get some sleep after I relieved you. Well, I tried, but I couldn't. I was just reading something by Mr. Thoreau. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What one trusts to be truths turn into compromises. And what is called resignation is confirmed desperation. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sour pill to have to take, ain't it? But I guess it's the truth. I reckon that's why me and books just always were in a different world. Yeah, books are another world to me now, too. I know they are, Adam. And I, I can appreciate what they mean to you. But this out here has always been my world. Smell of fresh pine, silver trout, jumping in a mountain stream. Old mama bear and her cubs out hunting in the woods. Bacon sizzling in a frying pan. Adam. Little Joe's gonna be all right. Don't you worry. You ain't got nothing to blame yourself for. I hope so. Go on upstairs and get some sleep. I'll call you when the doc gets here. All right. Whoa. Finally. Dr. Hickman. Morning, Adam. Haas? Doc. Sorry it took so long. Yes, let's go. message I got said he was also bitten by a wolf. That's right. Did you clean the wound out as soon as you could? As best I could on the trail. Any sign of rabies in that uh, wolf? No. Oh. Easy now. Easy does it. Easy does it. You get the bullet out all right. Those wolf fangs didn't help any. I know all that. How is he? Well, get some out. I ask you how he was. He's a pretty sick boy. It's unfortunate I wasn't in town. Unfortunate. Horace, you'll have to go into Virginia City to get this medicine. Yes, sir, Doc. I'll ride fast. Keep cold compresses on him. When that medicine gets here, just follow the instructions. I'll try and get back tonight. Tonight? You mean you're not staying? You're walking out? You're going to leave him here all day? Mrs. Fleming is going to have a baby in a few hours, I don't know when, and it's going to be a breech birth. Now, you know what that means. Well, tell me just how sick is my brother. All right, I'll tell you, Adam. He's pretty bad off, real bad off. I'm counting on his constitution and that medicine to save him. Maybe a little help from God. 
and there's nothing you can do? Uh, nothing at the moment. But I'll tell you this. If I'm not there, when Maggie Fleming's time comes, both she and her baby are goners. Now you tell me, what should I do? Please, Adam. Try not to be upset. Don't be ridiculous I'm not upset. After all, we still have those lovely sunsets. Vince. Vince, I got a prescription here from the doc. He wants it filled in a hurry. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. These, uh, chemicals. I'm all out of them, horse. Vince, little Joe's sick. I gotta have that stuff. Well, I'm sorry, Hoss. I have this stuff on order. I expected it in from Genoa yesterday, but it didn't arrive. Vince, I gotta have that stuff. My little brother's sick. Now, easy, Hoss. Uh, I'll get over to the telegraph office and check out the wholesaler in Genoa. Maybe it's on today's stage. Wait here. Hey, sorry, you fellas have to wait. All right. Too bad about your brother. What happened to him? He got wolf bit. Could be this brother of yours was up to the Montpelier Gorge section. Know where that is? Yeah, sure I do. As a matter of fact, that's where he was. Him and my other brother, Adam. Name's Cartwright. You fellas from Montpelier? Cartwright? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, we were trying to build up a little spread there. Been at it for three years now. Uh, you, you'll make it. That's real good country up there. We found that wolf. He was dead. Also found a horse running around loose up there. He has the same brand we spotted on your critter when you rode in. Come here. You know that pedo over there? Yeah, that's my little brother's horse. Thank you fellas for bringing him in. I'll be happy to give you a reward. We wanted to bring him in. We had to find out who panicked a herd of wild horses we just rounded up. Busted through our fences, scattered through our land, stampeded our cattle. Yeah, I reckon that would have happened when Adam fired at that wolf. I'm sorry. It was, it was an accident. Seems reckless and inconsiderate to us. Yeah, I, I reckon you haven't got a grievance dead. How much you figure it'll cost to fix it up? Well, since it was a cartwright done the damage, $1,000. That's quite a bit. You better talk to my brother Adam out at the Ponderosa. He'll he'll know how much damage he done. What's that? Uh, that medicine's still in Genoa. Where in Genoa? Simon Watson's, the wholesalers. Give me that. Now look, horse, that's a long ride. It's twenty-one miles to Genoa and twenty-one miles back. I got no choice, Vince. Mister, you're going out to Ponderosa. Do me a favor. Will you give this message to my brother Adam? Tell him that I had to go to Genoa to get the medicine for little Joe, and tell him I'll ride fast. Thank you. We'll just deliver that message. Any change? None. The fever's still very high. How's Adam? Oh, upset. Worried sick. Blaming himself for what happened. But it wasn't his fault. It was an accident. Some men are willing to shoulder responsibility when others would shrug it off. Adam's a sensitive man. He feels a deep personal guilt for what happened to his brother. I know. I've seen the pain and agony on his face. Why does he stay here? Why? Sure, it's his home. I know. But I have the feeling that maybe because he is sensitive, he should be somewhere else. Back east, maybe.
Adam Cartwright here? Yes. Adam, they're for you. Where'd you find the Pinto? You Adam Cartwright? That's right. My name's Dowd. Me and my friends here got a little spread going up in Montpelier Gorge. Where we found your sick brother's horse. You were doing some wild shooting up there a couple of days ago. Where'd you hear this? We met your other brother in town. He told us. By the way, he said to tell you he was going to ride up Genoa and get some of that medicine you needed. Thank you for the message. Well, what can I do for you? You can pay me for some damage you've done. That shooting of yours panicked some wild horses we had penned up, ruined our land, and stampeded some valuable cattle. How much? Three thousand dollars. Three thousand for what? Do I have to itemize? For three thousand dollars, you do. How many cattle did you lose? A hundred and fifty head. They're scattered all over the district. Do you want to round them up? Well, now, 150 head of cattle at $4 a head is only $600. $15 a head. Where? Chicago? Kansas City? I say they're worth $15 a head to us. Now, that's more than $2,000 right there. Then the buildings that got trampled, say, five, six hundred dollars $600. I think $3,000 is real conservative, Cartwright. Well, I think you're about $2,400 over. That's all right for you to say. You're a rich man. But all we've got to show is three years of wasted effort trying to build up a spread that you destroyed. Well, I'm sorry. But it'll have to wait. Wait for what? Until I can get over to your place and take a look at the damage for myself. Ain't gonna be no waiting, Cartwright. We want that 3,000 right now. Well, I'm afraid that's the way it's gonna have to be. And I'll give you about 10 seconds to get off my place. We'll go. But you'll pay. Well, Adam, you mustn't let those men upset you. The East is full of the likes of them. People looking for an easy dollar. Please, Mr. Reardon, I'm in no mood. Well, I'm sorry, son. I meant no harm. The trouble is, if you're Irish, how can you not interfere with other people's affairs? I'm sorry about your father. I'm sure he understands with one thing piling on top of the other. And them having to go all the way to another town for some more medicine. And those terrible men. Adam, how do you stand this horrible country? You're a man that belongs in the East. Sometimes I wonder. But I thought you liked it here. I hate it. I've hated it from the moment I saw it. There's a little town right outside of Denver. Our coach pulled up there one night. You know what we saw? A man hanging from a tree. His tongue hanging out. He had stolen four head of cattle. That's what they said to us. Why did you come? Because of my father. Oh, I see. He wanted to come out here. No. I insisted that he come out here. Well, then I don't understand. father's going to die soon. Twenty years of swallowing coal dust in the Pennsylvania mines. The doctor said that if he would have a change, he might live a little longer. So we wanted to come to a clean, invigorating climate. 
Does he know? Yes, he knows he's ill. He calls it the Pennsylvania chest. How could I tell him the truth, Adam? What if he gets better? I'll stay here permanently. Even though you feel the way you do? He's my father. We never know about people, do we? We have a lot in common, don't we? Yeah. Slip-ups. Get off your horse. What's this all about? Get his gun. Be careful of that medicine, mister. My little brother needs that bad. Sure he does, horse. Sure he does. We need our damage money bad. You tell your brother Adam that. Mister, a man's life depends on that. You give it to me. You can have it. For $3,000. You give me that medicine. Are oh, you stupid? What'd you hit him for? Now we gotta wait that much longer. Oh, I didn't hit him very hard. Well, anyway. Now his brother's gonna find out the price of medicine has gone up in Nevada. Oh. Sheila asked me to bring this up. It's nice and cold. Fever hasn't gone down? It's higher. Oh. Probably means something inside him is fighting hard. Is there never a bad side to a thing with you? Oh, I try not to ignore facts, but there's also such a thing as faith. When that medicine gets here, little Joe's life will be in the hands of God and science, two staunch allies. You always have the ready-made words for every occasion, don't you, Mr. Reardon? Has my father been upsetting you? I'm afraid I didn't need much stimulus. Adam. Adam. Adam, get him off me. Adam. Adam. I'm shot. I'm, sh I'm shot. Right, Adam, help Joe, me. Joe, he won't get you. You're going to be all oh, right. Please. It's all right, boy. Please. It's not right. Oh. All this waiting. All this suffering. No doctor. No medicine. What chance does he have, Adam? Adam! Adam, I'm shot. I'm shot. Oh. Adam, come down. Hurry. Oh. Someone rode to the barn. Couldn't see who it was. They took little Joe's medicine. They hijacked me and got it. You hurt? Not a bit. A little bit of headache. Who took the medicine? Yeah, those two fellows from Montpelier. They want $3,000. You mean they're holding little Joe's medicine for rents? Well, Adam, how could they do a thing like that? How? You tried to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. Because out here, it's... It's a jungle. For animals, savages, where one tries to destroy the other. Adam, ease up a bit. Ease up? Yeah, I'll ease up. 
When this is all over, I'm going away someplace where a man can live like a decent human being. But first, I've got something to do. Come on, we're going to find them. No, Adam, you mustn't do that. Why not? What else is there to do? Please, Adam, don't let them reduce you to their level. Not you, Adam. Let them go. Adam and Hoss have to get little Joe's medicine. That's what they have to do. They're not going out there to kill. Take care of little Joe. How about it, Cartwright? Get down. You want a rifle, Mr. Reardon? Yes, Huss, but I'm not too good at using it. You'll learn. Post yourself over that window and stay down. We want it now. Get upstairs and take care of little Joe. Now get ready to run. No. in the house, but they'd never believe me. All right! We want that money now! You want to let your brother die? I'm going out the side door. Cover me. That's your dutchy blackguard! Why don't you show the whites of your eyes the way you're supposed to? Looks like they ain't gonna buy it. I have to split up. I'll go run back. Get up on the porch roof. Through the bedroom window. Right. I'll splinter your backbone and drop your gun. <clears throat> Move fast. Dead. Where's that medicine? Dodd's got it. I want to bash your skull in. Give me that. Drop those guns. I want the money card right. Don't talk, just the money. Get it up or you know what's going to happen to this fella. Be reasonable, Dodd. I'll give you every cent we got in the house. Three thousand dollars. We have lots of silverware, lots of other things. Just a moment, Adam. Shut up, you. Turn around. Yeah. Hold it. Where's the medicine? In my pocket. Mr. Reardon. If this doesn't save my brother's life, I'm going to kill you. I'll just lock him up in the bunkhouse. Get going. Go on. Come on! Come on! Mr. 
Mr. Ridden, I don't know when I've seen such presence of mind and courage. It was neither, Adam. You see, I'm dying anyway, so I had nothing to lose. Sheila brought me out here in the hopes that the climate would cure me, but shit isn't going to make a bit of difference. Now you know. You're not as smart as you thought you were. Do you know what you are? An old fraud. I'm Emmett Reardon, and this is my daughter, Sheila. Joseph! Oh, you must be Ben Cartwright. Joseph! He's up here, Pa. Oh, I hope God keeps it close tonight. Almost six. Why don't you go up to bed? I gotta go and relieve Hoss guarding those men. I just sent Hoss to the sheriff's office with him. Alone? Well, they were tied up in the wagon. It's all right. He can handle it. Let me get you some coffee. Adam, it's little Joe. He's calling for you. Hey, brother. Pa. Pa, Adam really clobbered it. Yeah. He really clobbered that wolf. He's not gonna. He's not gonna touch our cattle anymore. I think his fever's broken. Is he gonna be all right? Well, I'm no doctor, but I think he'll be all right. Go downstairs now. Would you like to kiss me? Thank you, kind sir. You know, for a little while I, I had a dream cooking up. But it was silly of me, wasn't it? Imagine Adam Cotwright being happy at cotillions, social teas, and Sunday promenades back in old Philadelphia. You don't think I could have made the grade? Not with your heart back here in the Ponderosa, where it belongs. How can you be sure? I knew this morning. When little Joe called you, so did you. Sheila! Daddy's waiting. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. Bye, Sheila. We'll remember you and your father. And don't forget, Mr. Cartwright, if Adam ever comes east, Make sure he drops in for a visit. I'll see to it. There they are, child. Well, I've never seen such a collection of faces. As long as a rainy Sunday. Come on, Sheila. Give us a bit of a song. 
When first I saw sweet Patty, it was on the market day. Although my car he drove and sat upon the truss of hay. Tra la 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 la